also a contributor on television networks such as CNN, CNBC, and BET. He also publishes on written platforms such as HuffingtonPost.com, Fortune Magazine, and Black Enterprise. So, I don't want to take up any more time. I'm being timed over here for two minutes. Um, everybody, can you please help me give a very energetic welcome to our guest speaker tonight, Mr. Ryan Mack. How's everybody doing? Great. Good. My name is uh, Ryan Mack, a.k.a. Sweet Penny Pitcher. Uh, uh, hold up, blah, blah, blah. Sweet Penny Pitcher. It's only a penny. <laughs> they got me, man. They got me. I'm in there. I told you I'm all in. I'm all in, baby. But I want to thank, I want to thank Bert. For uh, being such a hospitable uh, host for me, I want to thank Jeremy for bringing me out here. And, uh, I want to thank the Mayor Source for putting your money in the right places. And uh, I just want to thank everybody out here. I, I definitely want to thank the guys, man. And you all for graduating this program. I, I told the folks earlier that I'm here a little bit selfishly because I like, I like blessings. Okay? So if I can say just one thing to maybe inspire you to do one more additional thing that's going to help you get your business off the ground, it's going to bless everybody, include myself, and I want to get everything I can out of you. you know, so I appreciate you all doing the amount of work that you all uh, are being able to do here today. So I'm just, I'm just happy to be here. I'm excited. I was able to go by the folks early, and we talked for about three hours, you know, and just had a conversation. It, I, don't, I don't consider it a speech at all. It was just a conversation. And we sat and we talked, and it was, I mean, I was filled, you know, and they had me do the dancing on the way in and dancing on the way out. And it was just a, it was just a beautiful time. And it, it reminded me of just, uh, of just so many times I've been uh, uh, inside and, and, and talking to folks like that, and just to see the level of hope, it gets me inspired, you know, and I, and I just thank God for all of you, I really do. You know, and... You know, sometimes, today, I want to talk about choices, but before that, you know, sometimes when people say things like, I love the summer, okay? You hear people say it all the time, right? I love summer. But you really don't love summer. You really love, it's the little things that make up summer. You don't love summer. You can't love summer. It's the time, it's the season. But you love the walks on the beach. You love the hot weather. You love the, the trips, the vacation. You love the hot sun on your face. It's the little things that make up summer that you really love. And that's what it was, you know, some people say, I love the winter. You know, but you really don't love the winter, you love going skiing, or you love the, uh, you know, you love playing in the snow and snowmen. You love when you can see your breath and walking outside. And some people actually like the cold. I didn't like the cold growing up. I grew up in Detroit. I can't get stand with the cold. But some people actually really like the cold. But it's those little things that make up the things that say you make you love things so much, but that's the way life is really all about. See, life, when some people say, you know, I love my life, you know, when you're talking about life, life as itself, it, it's kind of big, it's too vague. When you're talking about the little things that make up life, is what you really love. The every day getting up, the every day doing it and, and, and making a decision to do or not to do something. And the little things of life that really make up life is choices. The choices that we make. We are nothing more than a collection of choices that we have made all of our lives. We are nothing more than just choices that we've made. You know, so I say to people all the time, I am a fortune teller. I can tell the future. And you can tell future too. So well, how, how can you do that, right? Well, guess what? Every choice that you have made in the past leads you to who you are today. So therefore, every choice that you are making right now today is telling you what you're going to be tomorrow. It's choices. And that's why each and every single decision that we make, we have to understand that there is always a bigger picture, not only for the sake of ourselves, but also for the sake of how it impacts other people. I always ask folks, why is financial literacy important? Why is it important for you to choose to do financial literacy. And people say, well, you know, Ryan, I want to 
own a home and I want to be able to buy a car and I want to uh, save for retirement. And they say a lot of things that they really don't understand, they talk about internally, but financial literacy really is important for what it allows you to do for other people. Because the purpose of life really is a life full of purpose. Two most important days of your life, the day you were born and the day you know why you were born. And when you figure out why you're here, that's when you can start to make decisions to use fiscal responsibility and other skills and traits of life in order to make sure you can improve upon your life because everybody in here, as we talked about earlier today, everybody in here has things inside of them that are meant to not be them for them alone, but to give to other people and make other people's lives easier. You know, I like the story that it talks about in the Bible about Jesus carrying a blind man. And, and that talked, it was a really evident point of choice that the blind man had to make. See, when Jesus cured the blind man, he spit in some clay, right? You know, Jesus, he's a real smooth cat, right? <laughs> he spit in some clay. And then he rubbed it in, and he said, and he rubbed it in the blind man's eyes and said, Look here, I want you to walk two miles to the riverside and wash out your eyes. And the blind man had a choice. He could have said, Man, why don't you just cure me right here where I'm standing? I don't feel like walking all the way there. He had a choice. He said, no, no, I don't believe what you have. He could, he could say, I don't believe what you're saying. I don't feel like walking. I don't believe that you're, you're saying what you, what you, I don't believe you're going to do what you say you're going to do. I just feel like standing right here. I don't feel, he could have made the choice to not go there. He could have made the choice to argue. But he made the decision to walk. He made the decision to walk. So he walked two miles down to the riverside washed his eyes out, and he was able to see. So because he was able to make that decision to walk, he was able to see and he was able to obtain vision. You know, we're here today to talk about entrepreneurship, you know, and y'all folks are going through this program here, and I want to talk about to the graduates of the program, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of folks throughout the history of time that have made the decision to choose to walk as opposed to stand still where they are. See, that's what entrepreneurs do. We don't sit still. We walk. We, we want to make sure we see stuff happen. Let's, let's go through time here. Back in the early 1980s, there was a recession. And all of a sudden, and if you remember the Iran, Iranian Revolution, increased the price of oil. This was caused by, uh, you know, we had the ensuing energy crisis in 1979. This was caused by the new regime and the power in Iran, which exported oil in, 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 in intervals and a lower volume and all. We saw tight monetary policy and all sorts of things that happened in the early 80s that made it seem like it was not an opportune time to start a business. But some people made the decision to say, no, 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 that's okay. I'm going to choose to not listen to people trying to, tell, trying to tell me that I can't start a business. And that's why in 1980s, Applebee's and Fundworkers were founded and Ben and Jerry's. 1981, Buffalo Wild Wings founded, the, and then IBM sells the first personal computer, 1982. By the end of the recession, we had an Olive Garden and David Buster's. By 1983, the first Hooters was founded in Clearwater, Florida. People made the decision to not pay attention to all the negative news swarming around and people saying that this is not the time to be an entrepreneur. But then we got the early 1990s. We saw industrial production and manufacturing sales decrease sharply. We saw all sorts of things. We had another recession. And some people said, you know, it's now it's not the time to just have a business. But I'm so glad that Jamba Juice decided to choose to not listen to the naysayers and, and Caribou Coffee and Zaxby's and Baja Fresh. And then we saw Tim Hortons open up the, in, in 1991 and Starbucks and Cheesecake Factory both go public in 1992. People who made the decision to say, I choose to not listen to the naysayers. We can go on and on to the early 2000s. We had the collapse of the dot-com dot bubble. We had the venture ensuing September 11th attacks. We saw all these things, but in 2000, all these things, if you turn on the news, you could look on the news and say, boy, you know what? Oof. I shouldn't start a business now because look what the news is trying to tell me to do. I, the news is trying to tell me I should be scared. The news is trying to tell me I should be worried or concerned. But I'm so glad at the end of the day, Chick-fil-A opened up their 1,000 store in 2000. 2001, the first Apple store opened and it was deemed to be, it was deemed to be closed. It's all, boy, that's, that was declared dead upon arrival. 
2008 was declared to be recession proof. All of these organizations out here, you, you want to talk about HP, GE, Sports Illustrated, Trader Joe's, MTV, CNN, Lexus, Nexus, Microsoft, IHOP, Hyatt, Burger King, and Jim Henson's Muppets were all formed during times of recession. You know, I was in the, in the, in the green room one time, and I was listening, and I, and I saw this elderly gentleman walk in there, and, you know, I do stuff for CNN maybe about once a week. And I'm in there, and I saw this guy come in, and he asked me, say, hey, what are you on for? And, you know, you're there, you're kind of thinking about what you're doing. You're not really paying attention to who's coming in and out. And I said, yeah, I'm on for financial literacy, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to talk about finance and blah, 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 whatever. And he says, well, I said, well, what are you on for, sir? He said, well, I'm actually on because my name is Ted Sorensen. And I was uh, JFK's uh, speechwriter for about eight years and personal, you know, advisor for, you know, I helped him out a little bit. And I said, wow, okay. I said, this guy actually helped JFK. This guy has molded history. I mean, I felt like I was in the room with Michael Jackson. I mean, I mean I'm a, to me, I'm a historian, man. I just love when folks talk about history. So automatically, all, everything I wanted to speak about, and they, they called me in for my set. And I ran back into the room, and he was still there, and I just talked, and I asked him questions about JFK, and he said, and he talked about how he wrote Profiles and Courage, and, you know, I had him autograph a, a book that he wrote, I was reading the book Renegade, and he actually had a line in the book, and he autographed a part of, part of the book that he, that he actually wrote about, and I, and I just happened to have that book on me, which was crazy. And I said, wow, this, I said, man, you know, he said, I, said, well, I said, look, man, I, I, I know you got to go on set. He's going on Larry King, who was, you know, was uh, still on scene at the time. I said, listen, I, I, you got to give me something, man. I, I can't let you go. You got to give me something. Give me some knowledge. Give me another tip. Give me advice, something. I need, because I was trying to just pry for just advice and guidance. And, just, and he said, I'm going to give you something. He said, I told this poem to JFK. And, uh, you know, I, I, can, I can tell story after story after you talk about JFK, but that's a whole other thing. And I can digress. And it was just an amazing 30 minutes, one of the most amazing 30 minutes of my life. But he told me this poem that I want the entrepreneurs to take with you. He says, I told this poem to JFK, and I want to tell it to you. He said, bullfight critics, row on row. Fill the enormous plaza full. But only one man is in the know, and he is the one who's fighting the bull. I don't say that again, because to me, that's just heavy to me. Bullfight critics, row on row. Fill the enormous plaza full. But only one man is truly in the know. And he is the one who's fighting the bull. You know, we got a lot of folks that talk a good game, right? They talk a whole lot of stuff, and they say this and they say that, and they criticize what other people are doing and what not doing. They always have something smart to say about what other folks are doing. But the folks who are in your program, y'all are the bullfighters in this game. You all are the one who are not criticizing from the outside. You decided to say, I'm going to take it a step further, not just criticize, I'm going to go through this pet program and make sure I get everything I need to make sure that I become the bullfighter in the game. Like all those folks who in times of before, who have formed businesses in times of recession, and even though we see the hard economic times, you have decided that it's not enough to just be a criticizer. You want to be the bullfighter in the game. And I thank you for that because that's what this economy really needs. You want to talk about top-down growth? We all know that small business drives this economy. And it's going to come from you and the choices that you decide to make. Making sure that you have the right mindset and doing the things that you can choose to do. You know, choosing to say, you know, we make choices, you choose, some people can choose to believe in their mindset that life just happens. But you all believe that you create life. It just doesn't happen, you create it. Some individuals think that they're smaller than their problems. But no, you understand that you've chosen to believe that you are much larger than your problems and much larger than your obstacles. You know, I've had many stories in my time where folks might not have listened to me. And uh, one time I went to a, I had a meeting with a, a few pastors. And I had this one meeting and he made me go way out to Brooklyn, to Brooklyn, way out to East New York. And I had, it was a hot summer day. And I was just starting out, and I was so discouraged, and I went way out. I said, man, it's hot, and I had my bag. By the time I got out there, he was driving away in his caddy. I was on time. I said, where are you going? He said, oh, I forgot about the meeting. 
I said, well, can I at least get a ride back to the subway? <laughs> he didn't give me a ride. He just drove off. Now, I could have chose to be discouraged and say, you know what, I'm going to let it ride. I said, that's okay, because my brother told me something that he read in the Word. He said, Ryan, if you build it, they will come. If you build it large enough, they're not going to ride away from you. You're, you're going to have to beat them off with you in the back. And that's what I want to tell you today. Y'all going to go out here, and I told the folks today that y'all might get your, your, your 9 to 5, but I want you to work at 9 to 5, and I also want you to work at 6 to 10. 9 to 5 could be your day job, and you get that paycheck. But then I want you to work your 6 to 10. When you get back home at 6 o'clock, when you sit down with nothing but you and a pen and a pad and put that business plan together, or maybe go over that business plan that Pep helped you put together and start strategizing how you're going to make that come to fruition. That may start to make some calls and start establishing a network and go on websites like constantcontact.com and, and start to blast out. I met a brother earlier who was here that, 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 that does uh, glassware. Where's he at? He, he, Met a brother earlier. Does the glass on? He goes on. He can go on constantcontact.com and start blasting out a, a, a list through his listserv and start using things like cafepress.com in order to sell T-shirts, even if you don't have any capital. Start using all these free resources that are available to entrepreneurs that can help you start companies using bootstrap funds and that business plan that I know help help you put you, help you put together. These are the type of things that entrepreneurs do. You find a way to make it happen. You say, "Thank God for my day job." Because that's allowed me to keep my food on the table, roof over my head, and now I can go and use my 6 to 10 after my day job to strategize how we can make it better. Because you've chosen to make sure that you can do things that are empowering. You know, because at the end of the day, you can choose to chase money, or you can choose to chase knowledge. And I think that those who are entrepreneurs, especially those in the, in the pet program, You've chosen to chase knowledge. And that is so critical because it's a lot of folks that are here to chase money. Let me tell you about some folks that thought that, or might have thought that money was the most important thing. And maybe, have y'all ever heard of William Post? Anybody heard of William Post? Nobody? Oh, okay, okay. Well, well William Post actually won $16.2 million in the lotto in 1988, but now he lives off Social Security. Y'all ever heard of Susan Mullins? <coughs> Nobody ever, oh, okay, okay. Well, Susan Mullins actually won $4.2 million in the lottery, but now she's deeply in debt to a company that lent her money using the winnings as collateral. Anybody ever heard of Ken Proxmere? Anybody? Oh, okay, I, I guess you know. Well, Ken Proxmere actually was a machinist. He won $1 million in the Michigan lottery, moved to California, and he went to the car business with his brothers. Within five years, he filed for bankruptcy. What about Janite Lee? Well, tonight Lee won $18 million. Today she's only left with $700 in two bank accounts. These are folks, see, sometimes when people chase money, it's not about what, it's not money that creates wealth. I mean, yeah, but it's about knowledge and getting that education. I read in this real good book I like to read sometimes. It says, of what use is money in the hands of a fool? They have no desire to obtain wisdom. Proverbs 17, 18. Of what use is money in the hands of a fool if they have no desire to obtain wisdom? See, the folks in the pet program make me so impressed because they understand it's not just about going after dollars and chasing money and doing. They go after knowledge and education. But you know, we and I was just so amazed, literally amazed, when I saw the folks out here. Just that was so. And, and early we talked for three hours, but they were just so hungry and thirsty for knowledge. You know, I always say, uh, you know, education is the light in the tunnel of life. You know, education is the light in the tunnel of life that allows you to do certain things. You know, the instruction that you follow is the future that you create. Those instructions that you're putting down and putting steps together to help you to do the things that make you do the right things, especially to be an entrepreneur. So we got some choices to make. We got some choices to make. So are you going to get your financial house in order? That's a choice. It's a choice in order to say that you're going to improve your credit. That's a choice. You can make sure you're eligible for lending. That's a choice that you can make. It's a choice to make. Are you going to structure your business? Get an EIN number. Open it up in a separate account. List your business address. Get required permits, licenses, registrations. Apply for business credit. 
Get a lot business line of credit. Go to dnb.com and start establishing business credit for yourself. It's a choice to make sure that you can uh, make sure you examine your debt structure, making sure that you're minimizing your taxes and forming your right proper LLC, uh, S corporation, C corporation, getting a staff of folks around you. These are all choices as entrepreneurs that you will begin to make. Getting ready for bankers review, even if you don't have to apply for a loan and, and maybe in getting a personal banker and putting it on your board so they can give you some advice and guidance so that if you ever had to apply for a loan one day, you would then eventually be able to apply for a loan because they're giving you inside information. Making sure that you can write down a marketing strategy, using your business as a conduit for success for other individuals, and doing marketing plans and volunteering your time, sitting on panels, writing for different blogs, and using your expertise to help teach others and getting your name out there in the process. These are all choices that you can make. Investing in additional training, anytime things are slow, maybe I can start investing in training, go back and get additional classes. Get partnerships and start forming establishing networks. These are all choices, tangible choices that entrepreneurs do every single day. Getting involved with your family. Understanding that your family got you there is going to keep you there. So don't leave your family just because you think you're too busy working. You got to put some time in for family too. Getting involved in your church. Getting involved in the community. These are all choices that folks and entrepreneurs make on a day-to-day -day basis. Let me give you 12 examples of, of things that I consider principles and choices that people who are, are successful entrepreneurs do. Okay? Talking about how do successful entrepreneurs view unity. Choice number one. Successful entrepreneurs do not view unity as cumbersome. Successful entrepreneurs view unity as necessary. Successful entrepreneurs, how do they view passion and purpose? Successful entrepreneurs don't view passion and purpose as ideological. They view passion and purpose as predestined. They view it as if they know that before they were even born, somebody put something inside of them to make them great, and it's only up to them to make them strive for it. Successful entrepreneurs, how do they view networking? Successful entrepreneurs don't view networking in, with greed and go up to individuals getting business cards just to try to figure out what can I get from somebody. They view networking as a way to be benevolent and give. So they, they take the business card and say, what can I do to make this person better off, even if I might not necessarily make a dollar off of it? Successful entrepreneurs, how do they view the pursuit of knowledge? Successful entrepreneurs view the pursuit of knowledge as not only st not, not static and unilateral. They don't learn something and, and cease to stop learning. No, successful entrepreneurs view knowledge, the, the pursuit of knowledge as perpetual and comprehensive. They're always learning something. They're always reading something. They're challenging themselves to say, how many books a month can I read about different topics that's going to help me achieve my vision? What do successful entrepreneurs view as successful? Successful entrepreneurs don't view success as just an event. Successful entrepreneurs view success as a whole lifestyle. It never stops. And even when somebody's not looking at them, it's just nothing but a fly on the wall and God that can see their actions. They understand that they have to be still be making the right decisions and building character. Successful entrepreneurs, when they view proper positioning, proper positioning is not about just, it's not just luck. They understand proper positioning is something that's created because you worked hard enough to put yourself in the right place at the right time that when the right thing happened, you were able to open up that door of opportunity. Successful entrepreneurs don't look at prosperity as something that's just given to you. They look at it as something that's earned. Successful entrepreneurs don't look at things. They, 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 they're never victims. It's impossible for them to be a victims, to be a victim. It's, they understand that anything that happens, the, 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 the road of responsibility starts in at their own doorstep. Successful entrepreneurs look at their friends. They understand that not everybody can be their friend. And they have to be selective about how they choose their friends. Successful entrepreneurs, they treat others, everybody, friends and enemies, with love and never contempt. Successful entrepreneurs 
understand that character is not just doing what's in the norm. They understand, they choose to believe that character is not the norm, but what's doing what is right at all times. Successful entrepreneurs understand the power of faith. They don't believe it's just unicorns and pie in the sky. They believe that faith is something that is, is here, it's now, it's real, it's tangible. And if there's a mathematical equation for faith, you want to add it up to be half belief and half action equals faith. What you believe is what you'll achieve, but you must also put action in that in order to make anything to be able to conceive. This is what faith is all about. And I understand that sometimes when we just look back over our lives and, 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 and we see those things and decisions that we've made and the choices that we've made, we understand we, have, we ain't none of us have all made the best decisions. But you know what? I thank God for my failures. I thank God for those times when I've had to sit back and cry to myself because of the things that I was not able to do or the things when I've cried in my own little four rooms and nothing but me and God to cry. I thank God for those days because... That is what made me who I am today. The failures that I've ever had in my life have made me look back and say, if I didn't know what I did wrong, I couldn't have learned what I need to do right. And so I always say that at the end of the day, and think about that end of the road, the end of the long road that you're traveling, and I know sometimes it's going to be hard for you. It's going to be some hard times. It's going to be some things that's going to come in your way, and you're going to run into some people that, that you might not like, you might like, you might not like them, or, or obstacles that just sprout up from all different places. But just understand that on the other side of your blood, your sweat, and your tears, and your heart or your heartache and pain, there is somebody waiting on you to bless them. There is somebody who is a spouse, a child, that is waiting on the day for you to come and give them what's inside of you. So I say this to say that you've gone too far to let somebody talk you out of your dream now. I'll leave you with this story, or this small uh, uh, tip. Anybody heard of 409? 409 Cleaning Solution? Why do they call it 409 Cleaning Solution? Because it took 408 of the wrong tries before they came to the 409th time, before they got the right try. There's a story of a woman who was swimming across, who was trying to swim across the English Channel, it was real foggy, and she was swimming, and she kept going, and she kept going, and she kept going, it was cold, it was bitter, and she just, she felt like quitting, she felt like quitting, and she ended up quitting. And when she finally jumped on the boat, she said, no, I couldn't do it. They jumped on the boat, and the fog cleared, she was only, she was less than 100 yards away from the finish line. This is what life is all about, y'all. You are where you are. You may not be where you want to be, but you are where you're supposed to be. And I need you. We need you to never quit. Because quitting is the epitome of selfishness. With that, I thank you and God bless.